everybody, it's Chris and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. Have you ever had a VGA monitor on your retro Amiga and you're like, man, I wish I could use that thing on here? Well, wish no more. This is a crappy $23 GBS 8200 that we're going to wire into a Amiga DB23, an actual 23, not a cut down 25, for use on our 15 kilohertz inputs. If you have one of these things, or one of, or one of these things, the Commodore Amiga 4000 DB23 to VGA, what are you gonna do, right? What are you gonna do? Well, it comes with this little wire pack. It clips into this harness, and you get a red, a green, a blue, a C-Sync an H-Sync, which we're not going to use, and a ground, right there. This is for a 5 volt power lead that we're just going to toss out. Because I got myself a Hi -hi -yo! universal dial it down charge thing that we're going to check out. And it's one of those ones that comes with the 412 different tips to make you feel better and a special little magic key that I'm going to lose to take it out. An actual key. I have never seen that. You get a little piece of metal that apparently must go into this thing somehow to change the, the tip. What is the key for? Oh, the key is to adjust the voltage. Ooh, fancy. Right now it's set on three volts, but I need five. And now I see why you need that key that I'm going to lose. So, five volts. This is two amps which is what you're going to need. You don't want anything lower because you'll be browning out. People have done reviews on these in the past. Mr. Doug Compton did one a long time ago when he was really young. But I've procrastinated and procrastinated because I've always had 15 kilohertz capable Dell monitors. However, after 300 or so inputs on that one, well actually that one, it burned out the sink for 15 kilohertz and I ended up having all sorts of problems and Anyway, long story short, I have a donated monitor, and it's greatly appreciated. I've covered that in the past, but I wanted to get one of these just to see how it works, because I have a couple other Amigas and several other just plain VGA monitors on devices that don't have upscalers, flicker fixers, or RGB to HDMI devices. And I wanted to have something that I can just sit here and not have to worry about blowing up the monitors all the time when I'm repairing these various computers. And it has all sorts of different inputs, these banana style clips for uh, the old RGB arcade monitors, a big input down here for, I don't know, whatever, the output here, uh, two more headers for I have no idea what, there's zero instructions with these things. It's called that, that's a rice ramen three sword guys and a dancing dude holding a wheat bush looking thing. CGA EGA U, YUV to VGA which is YPPR component. So it's got some up menu down auto and software. I presume it's a menu. It runs off a solution SOC and a, I don't even know what that's called, my son main processor, my son. Okay, great. First, I'm going to plug this into the solar, and I'm going to see if the unit even turns on. I'm going to plug in my VG output, which I guess is this one, and we're going to turn on this Dell monitor on VGA, and we should see some crap on the screen. You like Chris. You're going to build this connector thing, this DB23? Yeah, these are solder headers. We split the connector. We just solder in these wires, and I'll show you in a second. We see some Hong Chao right there, and we see no signal. That's fine. I'm going to press this button. Oh, I don't know how to choose anything. That button? Nope. Both of these buttons? Nope. Hold that button. Hold this. Nope. Good God. Today's interrupter is my neighbor cutting the grass and setting off the Nest camera. It translates to Dan Xing Shang Sha. 
一般向设置显示菜图，为咸鱼退一二三四。What the hell does that mean? China. Why are they right up and down? Aspect ratio, picture bright color, dish degree. This is the stupidest thing ever. Okay, I know what okay is. English. Hot damn. Good God. All right. So we have a hot pink color here. It says main menu picture, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, default return, geometry. These buttons are ass, by the way. I'm heading to go that way, and it doesn't give a crap. Display and language. Powering up again. Is it in English? I don't know. It is. Wonderful. This is a DB23. Not split. Metal. Metal. Not split. It's a real 23. And it has these, like, cups that you got to sit the wire in except I need to look up how to put the wires in so let me get that diagram plopped up here on the screen for you here's the wiring for the GBS 8200 if you have a real DB23 connector looking away from it all of the numbers are on the top embroidered in these pins okay so when you're holding the connector away from you in the angle like this pin 3 is red pin 4 is green Pin 5 is blue. Below that blue is pin 16. That is black, your ground. And over here on pin 10, that's your C-Sync. I'll put all the housing on, but for right now, I'm going to shove it to the side. I found some solder on the ground that I actually used, because why not? We're going to plug in my VGA monitor, 31 kilohertz mode. Turn the Amiga on. We'll let that thing boot. Now we're going to turn the Amiga on, Fong Chow, and then we're just going to press, press that auto button, that's, okay, there we go, whew, now, this is fluttery, and this is flickering all over the place, it's not the end of the world, go into this geometry thing here, and these clamp dudes, we got to turn them down, oh, that's not right, see how it's disappearing, uh oh, let's increase that. Oh, a little too much. 92, 93, 94. Oh, 92, 91. Trying to get it not to roll, okay? ATK. I'm also going to change the resolution on here. The colors look good, but the jitters don't. Let's crank up this brightness. Saturation. I think it says power supply. Doesn't like sun. <laughs> Doesn't like my inverted power. It is pure sine wave, but, you know, it's solar, so it's not perfect. Much better. I thought it was going nuts. Okay, we have some goofy lines. It's not perfect, but it's perfect enough for me. I'm going to boot Amiga test kit, just so I have something to, to go. Or I could boot state of the art and let it really freak out. I mean, it looks actually pretty good there. There are some artifacting little lines rolling through. That's not a problem to me. Uh, we can go into this menu and go into our geometry and mess with this clamp stuff. See how it's cutting it off? Let's just take it down and see what it does. Ooh, clampy, not good. Cutting it off. Just I don't know what it means. STSP. But if I have it, too low, I have it too high, it freaks out. Oh, you gotta find that fine line. Let's try this display again. I'm gonna go to 640 by 480. That's 640 by 480, it's, it's not doing well. 1024 by 768, because that one works. All right, that works, and it darkened up a lot, because I was screwing around with it. Okay, when you go too crazy with, with saturation, you get those white lines behind it. Alright, how does it fare? It's 
okay to me. Let's try something that has a little bit more graphics to it. Like state of the art on floppy. It's gonna be fast, okay? Not bad. Woo! Oh yeah. That's the artifacting of NTSC Planet Pal video. But I mean it's working. This thing is doing it. $23. And 10 bucks for that DB23 connector. I bought two of them for when I screwed one up. So I mean look, minus my plugging it into the solar and couldn't figure that crap out. It's, it's working fine. It's just an Amiga 500 with the GBS 8200. There's an 8220. 9000 series. I don't need this. I might pin extract it and remove it. I'm only ever going to use this for Amigas because that's the only computer that really matters. And mainly for when I'm testing stuff. So I can boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, and I have a guaranteed signal that will work upscaled proper. Not doing Dell conversion, burning out my sink. Like it always does, some Amigas apparently are very picky with this and don't always work. And I do have to have one of these all the time. Well, one just went flying across the floor in the beginning of the video, and I haven't been able to find it yet. That's state of the art on floppy disk. NTSC, playing a PAL demo. With I'm seeing some like flying things. Now Neil from RMC. Put some tape on the back of his, some aluminum, is that how you say it? Aluminum. Aluminum -um tape on the back of his, or copper tape, and uh, ductwork tape. I have some of that metal tape. Maybe I'll give that a tickle and see if it clears up some of the stuff to make it super good. But I mean, for me, just testing your video on your Amiga, it's going to be perfect. If you have epilepsy, this is not the part for you. Good power supply is apparently key to this endeavor. I do see a little bit of flying things. I think that's that Neil Tape mod. I'm going to give that a try. Had it up on the old video screen. I'll have to take a peek and see how he did it. The Amiga 500 is just not, not what I need. I got the dude on. I got the RGB thing. Now this is an HDMI, uh, RGB to HDMI Amiga 600, but I'm in the DB23 on my new dude with loose cables. Yep. I'll have some wrapper shielding. I did extract the yellow pin because that's salt. We throw that out. So I'll slide all my metal bits out of the way and we'll turn the Amiga 600 on and hope to God it works today. Takes a minute. It's still booting. Actually, it looks okay. It looks okay. Normally this is an HDMI. So I am currently in what resolution? I'm an NTSC high res lace. This is an interlay screen and it is not flickering. Let's try double NTSC high res no flicker. Test. Um, I don't think I like that one too much. <laughs> Multi scan productivity 31 kilohertz. Never. Four. Holy crap, it does it. It's hanging on, it's trying it. Look at that. There's a timer going, so by the time I would hit auto and try to adjust it, it is possible I can run multi-scan productivity. I'm going to hit auto when it does that again. Multi-scan productivity laced? No, it, uh, that one's too much. Multi-scan productivity might be feasible here. Multi-scan productivity. I'm going to say use. Well, auto nothing. Let me unplug the GBS and plug it back in. I would love to know what this thing says. HD Jiba. That's what it means. And it's pronounced... HD Jiba. <laughs> it's pronounced... Go Ching Jiba. Go Ching Ching Ba. So this is the Go Ching Ching Ba or HD 
Jiba? HD Giaba. Giaba. That's your GBS 8220's name. I like this one better. Go Ching Ching Ba. So we got the Go Ching Ching Ba. Somebody's cooking something upstairs. And it's working. That's cool. And that is why you're always given one of these with the 4000 Tower desktop. Also got these, but my 4000 Tower does not have a video card, so I have to rely on one of those or a 15 kilohertz monitor RGB plug, which kind of sucks for such an awesome machine. My other Amiga 2000s have RGB to HDMI or microwave flicker fixes in them with the little adapters that already do this. But for something that is RGB friendly, DB23, plug it into anything, let her eat. It doesn't get that warm. I mean, it got warm. I'm going to put it in a case so I might do some kind of cooling solution, but I'm never leaving them on for extensive hours and hours and hours. Kind of neat. Not bad. This unit was $20.99 US. Okay? GBS 8200, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. The DB23 connector shield hood. $8.75. I'll put some general links in the description down below where you can get yours too. So that's just something quick and dirty for an Amiga cheapo flicker fixer for under, let's say, $40 with tax. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.